long-awaited confrontation begins in the Montreal Forum as the Canadians, possessing the best regular season record in NHL history, host the Philadelphia Flyers, who are in search of their third straight Stanley Cup. The playoff MVP for the past two years, Bernie Perra, will not be a factor this year. Wayne Stevenson inherits the goaltender's job from the injured Perra and will go head-to-head -head against Vesna Trophy winner Ken Dryden. League MVP Bobby Clark triggers the boisterous Flyers. The Canadians' solid defense is anchored by Larry Robinson and Serge Savard. It will be strength against strength in hockey's classic and ultimate battle. when he scores on the very first shot of the series after just 21 seconds. For the prolific Leach, it's a record 16th playoff goal following 61 goals in regular season action. With the Canadians suffering from an early attack of nerves, the Flyers flaunt their cup experience as Ross Lonsbury took the backhand shot past Dryden for a 2 to nothing lead. Deep concern is etched on Montreal faces. This is definitely the wrong script. A nightmare instead of a dream. These are the Montreal Canadiens. Dedication, pride, and tradition. I believe it's, uh, it's a dream of every boy in, in the province of Quebec anyway, and maybe a good part of Canada too, to wear the Canadian uniform. And all of a sudden you realize you one of a member, and you see all those the pictures in the room uh, of uh, past Canadians who are now members of Hall of Fame. And uh, the, it's up to you now to uh, take up where they, they left the team. And uh, I think it's certainly a kind of a, a great inspiration for any you know, young person coming up in the organization. Hockey in Montreal, uh, it's more than a sport for our people. I would say it's almost a religion and for them. The Seneca back in Montreal is very important in their life. Reaching for that something extra, Montreal defenseman Larry Robinson uses Braun to detour the flyer. converts the pass from Bob Ganey, and the margin is cut to a single goal. Peter Mahovlich and Guy Lafleur break out two on one, but unbelievably, Lafleur misses on a perfect scoring opportunity. Recovering quickly from his frustration, Lafleur slides a lead pass to send Mahovlich off on another rush. This time, Larry Robinson provides the proper finishing touch. The Montreal joy is dimmed early in the third period as Larry Goodenough slides his shot along the ice just inside the goal post. belongs to Philadelphia. But less than five minutes later, Montreal retaliates as Jacques Lemaire's soft backhand shot close to the far corner of the net. Stanley Cup pressure fills the atmosphere. Three in a row for the Flyers, the Cup returning to Montreal, the goal judge will flick his switch, and the red light will flash just once more this night. The forum is a mass of excitement. There is drama and tension as both teams spend every ounce of energy to get the winning goal. Now here's Steve shot along the boards ahead to Guy LaPointe. LaPointe moving right in, shooting, he scores! Guy 
three-point goal with only 1.22 left to play gives the Canadians a hard-earned opening game victory. But the Flyers are far from disheartened. We're one of the greatest hockey clubs of all time in the, the same as the Canadians and uh, the Maple Leafs. You know, any team to win three Santa Cups in a row, it's got to put you in a, in a pretty high class of, of hockey team. But I think pressure is, is something that each individual just puts on himself. Uh, if you want to play well, you want to do well, you want to win hockey games, you've got pressure to play well and to work hard. And, you know, if you don't care if you win or not, then there's no pressure. When we're on the ice, our specific job is to look after the line that we play against them. In Montreal, we've tried to match our line, Jimmy Rollett, Doug Jarvis, and myself against the Bobby Clark, Barber, and uh, Reggie Lee's line. And they're uh, an offensive threat all the time they're on the ice. And our job is to see if we can cut down their strength and our end. The Montreal strategy works to perfection. Yeni shadows Clark, and the big mobile defense Fred Shiro worried about lives up to its reputation. Savard, Robinson, LaPointe, and Nyarop smother the Flyers' attack. The one man thought to represent the Flyers' weakness performs heroically in goal. Stevenson's brilliant goaltending highlights 35 minutes of scoreless hockey. The Flyers gain a one-man advantage late in the second period. But Jacques Lemaire stops the power play with this magnificent maneuver. The replay shows how deftly Lemaire steals the puck, maintains control, and then skates in alone. Lemaire beats Stevenson cleanly, breaking the scoreless deadlock. The Canadian's mystique is clearly no mystery at all. The pride, the tradition, the desire is all reinforced with an abundance of talent. And once they gain the upper hand, they refuse to relinquish it, increasing the pressure as the game goes on. Growing faster rather than slower. Stronger rather than weaker. Determined rather than overconfident. the score 2-0 and gives Dryden some breathing room. Now the hard-hitting defense wants to protect Dryden's shutout. Looking for a passing outlet, Dave Schultz suddenly finds an opening of his own and scores. The shutout ended. The Canadians now have two minutes and 25 seconds remaining to protect the victory. For the second time in two games, the defending champions stage a spirited six-man attack in a tremendous effort to send the contest into overtime. And for the second time, their extra effort falls short. The Canadians capture the first two games in heart-stopping fashion. They have every reason to celebrate. The Flyers have played well. Still, they will have to dig even deeper especially with the love affair exhibited at the spectrum between the Flyers and their fans. Philadelphia is all but unbeatable on home ice, and the loyal crowd expresses its faith. The Canadians 
Marlins are now in enemy territory for the initial time in the series. They have not won in the spectrum in three years. The pressure is intense and constant. Montreal's Peter Mahovlitz comments. Well, I think probably the pressure comes from the, uh, the press and uh, it's related to the fans and then the fans put the pressure on us and, uh, you know, we can accept the pressure, not accept it, and uh, if we accept it, we uh, probably will play a lot worse than, than we should and uh, if we just forget about it and go and play our hockey game, uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't uh, bring it back in. Uh, we had a great season this year and it doesn't mean a barren thing if uh, we don't win the Stanley Cup. The visitors are tentative at the outset, but an early Philadelphia penalty gives the Canadians a power play opportunity that leads to the most puzzling goal of the series, just moments after Stevenson stops Murray Wilson with a fine glove save. The Flyers force Montreal to regroup as Kendra Chuck stick checks effectively. LaFleur drops the puck off to Steve Chuck. Chuck fires from the neutral zone, and it eludes Stevenson for a goal. While the Canadians congratulate Chuck, Stevenson wonders what went astray. On the replay, you'll see Chuck strike the puck while it's rolling. It carries end over end, directly towards Stevenson's glove hand, but dips at the last instant and slips through the goaltender for the opening score of Game 3. Having missed his nightly playoff goal a game in the second contest, Reggie Leach has some making up to do. Playoff goal number 17 for Reggie sends the fans into ecstasy, ties the score, and cuts us off a flurry of slam-bang hockey that typifies the two strongest teams in the game. Powerful shot through Dryden's pads, puts the Flyers in front, and suddenly there is the feeling that this is the beginning of comeback time for the reigning champion. Power plays, virtually silenced in games one and two, are now shouldering the importance Coach Scotty Bowman suggested before the series. A Philadelphia penalty in the final second of the first period has the Canadians attacking at the start of the middle session. DuPont's clearing attempt goes right back to Steve Shutt. Stevenson is helpless. Chuck scores, and the game is tied. Philadelphia lapses are rare indeed, but the Canadians have twice taken advantage to register goals. Sensing they have gained the momentum, Montreal applies constant pressure. The Flyers falter, but Wayne Stevenson will not yield. Still, the Montreal attack builds, and the inevitable can no longer be stopped by a goaltender alone. Pierre Bouchard's goal, the culmination of 30 minutes of digging, determined hockey, breaks the tie, and Montreal is back in front. The Canadians defensemen rise to the occasion once more and with help from their strong back-checking forwards, effectively stymie the Flyers. At the last line of defense, Montreal's articulate goalkeeper, Ken Dryden, has his perspective. We are a good team um, and uh, we have very high expectations of ourselves and others have very high expectations of us. And uh, I don't think that those expectations are unfair. Philadelphia Flyers are a, a very disciplined, controlled, uh, opportunistic kind of team. Um, they're very good in our defensive end. They forecheck very well. And given their style of play, they, they create sudden chances. 
Dryden and his Montreal teammates stopped the Flyers on those chances to capture their third consecutive victory by the margin of a single goal. The striking statue at the Spectrum entrance and scoring is what's on the minds of hometown fans as their Flyers look for a way to break through the powerful Montreal defense. A change of fortune might be the answer. So Philadelphia management calls on a personal appearance by Kate Smith, the Flyers' good luck charm. Revitalized by Kate and the enthusiasm of their fans, the Flyers explode early, spearheaded by record-breaking Reggie Leach. It's goal number 19 in the playoffs, number 80 overall, and a new NHL single-season goal-scoring mark. The spectrum goes wild, but the Canadians are not undone easily. They have one purpose, return the cup to Montreal. Stevenson protects his one goal margin against the Montreal onslaught. But the Canadians keep coming in waves. Steve Shutt finally gets the equalizer with a strong shot into the near corner. The Kate Smith High has been extinguished by Montreal aggressiveness. And the Flyers are battling for survival. Pierre Bouchard's second goal of the series puts the Canadians ahead 2-1 to one, and the gloom is thick at the spectrum. But the Flyers didn't gain their two Stanley Cups unopposed. They've been down before and fought back. Their well-deserved reputation as hockey's strong-willed and hardest-working team has not been lost. Champions never go down without a titanic struggle. The Canadians will know they have had to earn their rewards. Nothing comes easy against the Flyers. isolated second look at the Flyers' tying goal shows Bobby Clark on Dryden's doorstep distracting the goaltender as Bill Barber pushes the rebound through and into the net. Shaking Montreal's penalty killers, the Philadelphia power play has two goals already tonight and aims for a third. DuPont's tally puts the Flyers in the lead and the spectrum gloom has erupted into celebration as the proud champions come off the floor for a fight to the finish. Larry Robinson and Jacques Lemaire lead the Canadians up the ice and once again, the opportunistic challengers convert a Flyers error. Unguarded in front, Ivan Cornwaille lifts his shot over Stevenson, and the game is tied at three. Putting their mistakes behind them, the Flyers apply pressure in the third period, and now it's Ken Dryden's turn to hold the fourth. Aided by the crossbar on Gary Dornhofer's shot, Dryden weathers the storm in acrobatic fashion. With the possibility of the first overtime contest of the series looming, tension grows. Nothing can be taken for granted. Although Montreal has a seemingly safe three-game advantage, 
Every minute has been a battle. Each game a war. Guy LaFleur shatters the tie with less than six minutes remaining in game four. The Canadians are jubilant. The Flyers and their 17,077 faithful are stunned. The reality of the moment seems unacceptable. The champion Flyers are about to be dethroned in four straight games. A sweep was the most remote of all probabilities before the series began. As Peter Mahovlich registers an insurance bill, it is now certain the Canadians will be taking the cup home before the night is through. Three wins by a scant one goal margin and the final victory by two goals does not indicate an overwhelming superiority. Yet the Canadians swept through their three playoff series with only a single loss to the New York Islanders in the semi-final round. Scotty Bowman called his team lucky to have won in four games. But recognizing true greatness, the Philadelphia fans salute the old champions and the new with a standing ovation as the Flyers put aside their disappointment and defeat to congratulate the victors, displaying the true spirit originally intended in all sporting arenas. Team captain Ivan Cornwayer claims the treasured Stanley Cup from NHL President Clarence Campbell and the legend of the Montreal Canadiens continues with the acceptance of Stanley Cup number 18. Montreal, uh, it's more than a sport for our people. I would say it's almost a religion. And for them, the Seneca back in Montreal is very important.